Um, so just once again, uh, toolkit evolved from the idea that there was a lot of knowledge and know-how um, described in minerals processing literature, uh, much of it published by uh, people at the JK, um, but also a recognition that you know, technical papers in themselves may not necessarily be sufficient for a wider industry audience to harness the know-how uh, that might be wrapped up in some of these, these papers. And sort of more broadly, this links into an issue which, in my experience, uh, pertaining to engineers in particular, which is that people often need to play with calculations to fully understand the implications of you know, the models that underlie them. Simply reading about them in the literature may not be enough for someone to incorporate um, them into their day-to-day -day business. So out of this thought process, uh, Toolkit was born, and in particular, the idea of hosting it in an Excel app. And Excel is key to all of this because it's everywhere. Um, not everybody knows how to code in Python. Um, not everyone has access to MATLAB, but everyone has Excel. It's ubiquitous and you can't get away from it. So the app lives up in the ribbon and essentially stays out of your way until you call it, in which case it's simply within arm's reach, so to speak. There's no need to look for spreadsheet templates that you might have otherwise archived away in historical folders. Um, you know, there's no need to search for online calculators, which might do similar functions. Toolkit will only ever live a single click away. So here is what the tab looks like. Uh, you'll see four main buttons containing calcs in this version one release, which are related to comminution, mass balancing, some statistical functions, as well as this general tab, which is really just a bucket containing tools that don't fit in the other buttons. Clicking on a button reveals drop-down menus where you can access each calc, and you can see two example comminution calcs here. So this is what is in the version one release. Um, essentially, a range of mature industry standard models, some of which uh, you may already be familiar with, as well as some fairly sophisticated routines that you'll only really find described in the technical literature or fairly specialized reference tests. Now, I won't go through all of tools today. However, I will describe um, the items that I've highlighted in red. The first tool that I'll cover is the Morel Power Draw model, which is one of the most well known models to have been developed at the JK. It's the major outcome of Steve Morel's PhD thesis from the early 1990s and predicts the power draw of motors for tumbling mills, so for ag, sag, and bore mills. For the JK SIMMET users out there, this is the implementation, which is in which is in SIMMET. You can see the inputs in purple, uh, ranging from design variables such as the mill diameter, uh, the length, even the cone angles of the mill, to operational variables such as the speed, bore load, and total loads. The outputs are in grey, which are the predicted power draws of the motors in, in kilowatts. It's one of the most well, it's one of the most um, famous models in the comminution world, as well as one of the most well validated, as you can see from the parity chart here, comparing observed motor powers against what is predicted by the model. The next tool that I'll talk about deals with error propagation and recovery calculations, and specifically those that use the two product formula. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the two product formula, um, and not everybody is in my experience, um, it is one of the most useful formulas in mineral processing uh, because it allows you to calculate the recovery of a unit or even an entire process with nothing more than the assays, the feed, the concentrate, and the tailing streams. You can see the formula here. It does not contain mass flows in tons per hour, for instance. It only contains assay inputs. And this makes it useful because frequently tonnages are unknown. Uh, or they might be metered, um, but perhaps unreliably so. So as an example calculation, we have a scenario where the feed 
the concentrate and the tailings assays are 1%, 25%, and 0.15% copper, respectively. And these are very typical numbers, which when you plug into the two product formula, give you 86% recovery. But as any of you who have ever done our stats course would have learned, uh, one of the key questions should always be 86 plus or minus what? These three assays each have uncertainties that are impossible to eliminate. And when you feed these uncertainties into equations, they interact and they propagate, resulting in you know, what can be quite large overall errors in the final answer. So the overall uncertainty of the final recovery is represented by this uh, monstrous equation here, which requires you to remember how to calculate partial derivatives. But essentially, the uncertainty in recovery is driven by the sensitivity of the two-product formula with respect to changes in the assays, as well as the uncertainties in the experimental assays themselves, which are defined here as variances. In our example, we'll assume some typical uncertainties or SDs for each assay. So relative errors of 10, three and 15% for these streams. And when you plug all of this info into the error propagation formula, what you'll find is that the confidence interval on this 86% recovery is plus or minus 5.2%. So that is any single experimental recovery uh, could range anywhere between 81 to now only 1% simply due to assay imprecision alone. And this is often underappreciated. One of the ways that you can mitigate this is by doing repeat tests, but that is a story for another day. Now, not everyone can remember how to calculate partial derivatives, but with Toolkit, you don't need to because the app does all the hard work for you. You simply input your assays on the left, as well as your relative errors on the right. Uh, the two product formula is used to calculate recovery here. And this here is the SD of recovery. Now, approximately two times this SD gives you your 95% confidence intervals, which in this case are plus or minus 5.2%. And as I said, this is often underappreciated. So it might seem incredible, but we do have some experimental data um, to validate this, which I'll share with you later. The next tool that I'll cover is one that undertakes a statistical comparison of the separation between two linear trend lines. To kick off, I just wanted to reference this particular paper presented by Michelle McMahon of Mucres at the Mill Ops conference in Perth a few years ago in 2016. And what it shows is the recovery of gold as a function of mass pool in the tail for flotation planes. And it makes sense that as mass pool increases to more aggressive ranges, so too does the gold recovery. However, you can see that the trend for conditions under improved pole chemistry in red uh, is vertically offset compared to the trend under baseline conditions in blue. And that vertical displacement represents the improvement in gold recovery across all test mass pool ranges. And in this instance was a, 20, uh, a whopping 29% recovery improvement. So this was a huge win for Michelle and her team. Now, the problem for the rest of us is that for most of our data sets, these types of improvements, if they exist at all, are normally quite subtle, typically in the order of 1% to 2%. And most of the time, these differences, even if they are real, can often be camouflaged by the noise and variability in the data. So let's just consider some scenarios here to illustrate. Here is one where the vertical displacement is 8%, and that's pretty clear, even by eye, that the white trend sits above the black trend. Here is one where the vertical displacement is only 4%, and you can see that this displacement is starting to be crowded out by the variability in the data. Finally, here is one where the vertical displacement is a very typical 2%. And if that 2% is indeed real, it could mean tens of millions of dollars in extra metal production per year, and it shouldn't just be dismissed. 
The challenge in this instance is determining whether or not this offset is indeed real or if it's simply an artifact of noise and experimental error. Now in this graph, um, Y and X can be represented by anything, but frequently they are, they are things like recovery as a function of feed grade. And the two different trend lines might represent different reagents or perhaps baseline, baseline conditions versus performance under a new processing technology. And the decision about whether or not to proceed with what might otherwise be a risky change or implementation is contingent on whether the improvements are real or significant against the backdrop of the noise and variability in the data set. So just to reinforce the problem statement, how do we know if this 2% recovery increase is real or if it's just an artifact of noise and experimental error? Now, Tim Napier Munn went about solving this particular problem and detailed the approach in a minerals engineering publication back in the late 90s when he was the director of the JKMRC. And for those of you who have done the JK stats course, it's covered in the regression module on day two. And we do give out an Excel template, which does the calcs for you. But it is one of those messy spreadsheets um, that, in my experience, often gets filed away and forgotten about by participants after the course has closed out and everyone has returned back to their normal lives. So in the spirit of making things more accessible, this has all been packaged into Toolkit. So there is no more excuse for losing the spreadsheet anymore. This is what the interface looks like. The data gets pasted into these purple columns. So here we have two sets of X, Y columns. And when you press calculate, uh, the data gets trended in the scatter plot. And this table here summarizes some basic statistics of the two trend lines. There are some checks that you need to undertake in these tables here. Um, that's a story for another day, but everything you need to be aware of is detailed in the help files. The main outputs of interest, if those checks have been passed, are summarized in these red boxes here. What they indicate is that the red trend is 1.78% offset uh, above the blue trend across all the feed grades. So there is a 1.8% recovery benefit evident under that new condition. Is that recovery benefit real? This p-value here is 1.5%. Now, 100 minus this uh, represents the confidence we have that the recovery benefit is significant. So we're not 100% confident that the recovery benefit is real, but we are 98.5% confident that it is real and not just an artifact of noise and error in the data set. Another important output is the error bar or the confidence interval on the 1.8% improvement, which is plus or minus 1.6% shown here. So it's a very useful tool um, that's been, and if, if, if you um, look, you know, if, if you're familiar with the minerals processing literature, you'll see it used in many um, instances. Um, here is an example, uh, this time by Chris Greet uh, from Magato. Uh, which was presented at a MillOps conference many years ago now. Um, but he used this approach to assess the benefits to copper flotation recovery when grinding media alloy composition in the upstream bore mills was changed. You can see the green trend corresponding to high chrome media is displaced above the red trend corresponding to forward steel media. And that this recovery benefit was 2.5% with more than 99% confidence. Without this analysis, the effect of this change in feed grade would have totally swamped out the beneficial effect of the high chrome alloy. Um, and this benefit to recovery would not have otherwise been, been visible. So this is one instance of where this particular um, approach has been used um, to analyze full scale plant trial. Some bonus outputs from this tool are printouts of the two trend lines, but with corresponding confidence intervals. Now, each trend line has two types of confidence intervals. There is the interval for a single prediction along the X, Y model, which are represented by these large intervals here, as well as the confidence intervals for the line itself, which are represented by these narrower intervals here. And this is a, a, another benefit which the toolkit implementation has over that, that spreadsheet that we distribute as part of JK stats course. The final tool that I'll cover today 
uh, is one that streamlines best practice comparisons of two grade recovery curves. It's very common to represent flotation performance in terms of the trade-off between increase in recovery versus the corresponding decline in concentrate grade. And frequently in process improvement initiatives, a curve representing baseline conditions is compared against a new curve. And this new curve might correspond to um, conditions of a trial of some sort. Um, so this could be a trial of a new reagent, um, a new piece of equipment, a new process control strategy. It could be whatever. But the key question then becomes a case of, at my target concentrate grade, does this new condition facilitate a recovery benefit? And this can be complicated by the fact that the two curves are often not parallel. So while at some con grades, the new conditions might provide some benefit to recovery, this could then erode at other concentrate grades. Just to lay down some context, um, what you can see here is an average grade recovery curve of 50 batch flotation tests of the same sample by the same operator. What you can see in this slide are the raw data of the individual 50 tests. You can see that there isn't really a grade recovery curve, but a grade recovery cloud due to the halo of error surrounding each particular point. And remember that this is the same operator floating the same sample 50 times in a laboratory. So this is about as pure as repeats get in the type of test work which is common in, in our discipline. Uh, and this is probably one of the best visualiz visualizations I've come across of the underlying noise and test work data that is often underappreciated. But the point here is that any attempt to improve recovery should really, in a sense, beat this noise. Because if the perceived improvement is really just a part of the noise, then there is, isn't really an improvement present at all. Oh, and by the way, if you remember um, back to that propagation of error uh, that I discussed a few slides ago, here is that plus or minus 5% on recovery. So in this instance, any single recovery will range typically from 63 up to 73%. So that's about a 10% range. And again, this is often not seen because how often do you do 50 repeats of the same test? So going back to the tool, what it helps you to answer is, given the differences in the curves and precision in the tests, so the noise and the data, does the trial condition result in a real recovery benefit at my target concentrate grade, 25% copper in this example? What Toolkit does is it fits a model to each curve, allowing it to then calculate recoveries at any given concentrate grade. And from there, the tool simulates what might happen if you were to go to the effort of repeating the experiments a thousand times each. So in practice, in the lab, every time you repeat a test, you probably won't get the same results as last time, but you'll probably get some slightly different curves due to experimental error. The tool simulates this effect by introducing artificial noise into the experimental data set, this noise being controlled by the standard errors of the baseline fits in this very first step. Models are fitted to these synthetic data sets. Recovery predictions are made at the target concentrate grade of interest. And this process iterates and repeats a thousand times each for the two data sets so that 1,000 differences between baseline and trial recoveries can be obtained, interrogated statistically, and then plotted. So once again, in a heroic effort, Tim Napier Munn detailed this approach in minerals engineering over 10 years ago and reiterated the steps and approach in his book. Um, now you can go to the effort of familiarizing yourselves with the granular detail of each step and the models to then implement into your own Excel routines. But that is a miserable process that I wouldn't wish upon anybody. Instead, you could just use Toolkit. So here is what the template looks like. Here is where you input your experimental data. So two sets of concentrate grade versus recovery data. 
And here are the outputs. There are a few outputs that are reported, um, but the way that you interpret these are all detailed in the help file. The short story in this instance is that at my concentrate grade target of 25% copper, the recovery improvement is 3.9 plus or minus 2.6%. And is this real? Absolutely. We're more than 99% confident that this recovery improvement is not just an artifact of experimental error. Probably the most powerful visualization of this is in this histogram, which plots those 1,000 differences between the simulated baseline and trial recoveries. That black reference line here represents 0% uh, recovery improvement. The peak of the histogram is at 3.9%. And importantly, you can see that there is very little risk of the recovery difference being zero or falling into negative ranges. Now, I personally find this visualization quite powerful and compelling. I find it conveys risk more effectively than the conventional approach of representing uncertainty, which is with plus or minus error bars. So just as a note, when you execute the calc, my advice is to have a stretch, grab yourself a cup of coffee, because when you press start, it will execute 2,000 iterations of solver. And our testing has indicated that with typical data sets, this can take anywhere between five to seven minutes to complete, um, even on my home PC, which is uh, over 10 years old. However, we have found that it is sensitive to local conditions uh, and processes that might be humming along in the background of your computer. So if you're the type of person whose workspace always looks something like this, and you know who you are, then you're probably gonna give your computer an asthma attack and the calc will probably take more than seven minutes to, to take place. So it's best to close down other applications prior to starting the bootstrapping run. One of our objectives in all this was to demystify these types of calculations. We don't want you to keep having to search for source references to learn how to use the tools and to interpret their outputs. So we went to a lot of effort to write a detailed help file. It is very granular and written in plain English, and it should be all you need to get started. It does direct you to some source literature for those of you who would like to drill deeper into what the routines do under the hood. So that's uh, basically it. Um, finished a bit earlier than what I was expecting. I must have talked really quickly. Uh, so Toolkit is, is, a, is an app, it's an Excel app, which contains mineral, uh, well, useful mineral processing calculations, um, some of which are fairly bread and butter, um, others of which are, are novel and highly specialized. Um, the intent is to keep all this capability within arm's reach in Excel. So there's no need for any specialist coding knowledge um, to run these calps. Um, this is what we call the version one release. Um, there will be versions two, three, and four going into the future, which will incorporate more tools. Um, but this is what we have um, as, of, as of today. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the team behind this, uh, Pratchy. She's online right now. Um, she was the workhorse who uh, coded um, all this up. Um, and uh, went through many iterations of testing uh, between uh, myself and, and Tim Napier Munn. Uh, Professor Tim Napier Munn, who's also online, um, who went uh, above and beyond the call of duty to, um, to, in, in the testing efforts, helping us identify bugs and errors in, in particularly in the bootstrapping routines. Um, by the way, all this was his idea. Um, he, he seeded the idea for JK Talk at many years ago. So it's been, it's been a privilege to have been part of the group who have finally you know, brought this across the line. Um, also to uh, Bevan Wong, um, who many of you, you know, he's the JK Tech Operations Manager. Um, he supported um, this and um, uh, tolerated the, the testing effort. Um, and without his support, uh, this wouldn't have been possible. Did I mention that this is all free? Um, so to obtain your copy, um, you simply visit our website, uh, www.jktech.com.au. Um, you find the products tab, and from there, there's a submenu um, or software. In it, you'll find um, the toolkit uh, landing page. Um, basically, there's a form that you populate. Uh, when you press submit, you'll get an email, um, which will contain the download link uh, for you. So that's it 
from me today. Um, I hope uh, this has piqued your interest um, in Toolkit. Um, if you have any feedback, you can always email us. Um, if you identify any bugs, please reach out to us. And um, if you have any ideas for what should be in, in future releases, um, by all means also um, uh, let us know. So that's it from me. Um, I guess now I'll just open it up to questions. Um, I'm just going to the chat thread here. Uh, Bianca, does the Morel power model include the more recent additions he published on slurry level effect? No, Bianca, it does not. It's just what's in Simmet. Uh, we might look into that for, for version two, um, but that won't be um, until down the line. Um, Stephen Raywood costs, um, this is free. Um, are you interested in third party IP contributions from Stephen? Uh, we haven't, we haven't thought about it. We haven't crossed that bridge. Um, maybe, um, I'm sure we can have that chat later. Andrew, for the comparison of linear trends, just to test the limits, if the trends are not exactly linear, slightly curved, will the stats still be reliable? Um, this is where there are shades of gray, Andrew, um, you have to sort of make judgments about whether a linear model is is appropriate, um, and you can actually test for for linearity um, using using regression methods. Um, again, that's sort of beyond the scope of, of this webinar. Um, but what one of the checks uh, that you do as part of the as part of the um, assessment is whether or not you do have um, lines with, with with real gradients. Um, if there are curves in there. Um, that's where things get a bit hazy, probably not, you probably shouldn't use this tool and you should be using other methods to assess whether or not there has been a change um, in, 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 in response, given your changes in process conditions. Um, yes, Tim, another one from Tim Napier Munn. Um, I've mentioned that the bootstrap method can compare two grade recovery lines at a specific con grade. What I kind of sort of glazed over is that there is another assessment in the tool, if I just scroll back, and I, I sort of um, whizzed over this because I wasn't sure how long it would take, to be honest, but there is this um, test here called the extra sum of squares test. And uh, what, it, what it does is it makes an assessment um, about whether or not your two data sets um, exist on the same uh, model or whether they are deserving of having two separate models. If they are deserving of having two separate models, then you know by definition um, there'll be a, a recovery difference at, at at different concentrate grades. Um, if the two data sets really are part of the same model, um, then by definition uh, there is no separation in in recovery um, as you move along different concentrate grades. So this is what's called an extra sum of squares test. It gives you an assessment of the overall difference between these two lines. Um, the benefit of this is that you don't have to wait five to seven minutes to obtain your answer. Um, you, you can run this test independently of those, you know, 2000 simulations, which might take seven minutes. Um, you can run this test independently of the bootstrapping runs and get uh, an overall result instantaneously. Um, so that is, uh, another feature of this tool that that we built in um, into into the comparison of grad recovery curves. Hey Bill, um, thoughts on adding general plant met equations, P eighty calculations, F eighty estimates from CSS DWI parameters. Yes, absolutely. Um, I guess the, this was a we, we, there was a discussion about what to do with the software and how to treat the app. And in the end, Bivin decided to kind of just make this all free, um, you know, for the benefit of the industry, so to speak. Um, so in that conversation, we had to make decisions about um, what would make it into the first release. Um, you know, how much effort do we put in um, considering that it is free? Um, and so in, in, in that context, there were a lot of candidate tools uh, that we, we, we parked for, for the time being. Um, we weren't sure what the response would, would be like as well. Um, so if we released this and there were just crickets, um, then, you know, we, we, would, we would have reconsidered whether or not having a version two or a version three in the pipeline would have been a worthy effort. Um, so 
you know, depending on the response and, you know, people's feedback, um, you know, version two um, in the future uh, will certainly incorporate more tools and um, those candidates will come from ideas that we have up our sleeve as well as uh, feedback from, from users. Um, that seems to be it, I guess. Uh, this, like I said, this webinar went a bit faster than what I was expecting. Um, but thank you for uh, joining the webinar. Thank you for your interest. Um, as I said, if you want to get a, get a copy of the app, um, just make your way to uh, our website, uh, find products, go to software, and then you'll see tool, toolkit lurking um, in the software page. Uh, upload your details into this form, press submit, a few minutes later, you should receive an email with um, a download link and everything you need. Um, so that's it from me. If there are no other questions, um, please reach out if you have any uh, issues with the installation. Please reach out if you have any ideas for what you want to see in future releases. Um, and apart from that, uh, thank you for your interest. And um, I hope I hope you get value from from the app.